there was one of the coldest nights I've ever spent. You can see my breath. <sighs> it's so cold. <laughs> I ended up having to use an emergency blanket just to stay warm. It was just really, really cold. I had my hat pulled right down over my face. I was still cold. <laughs> Not the best of things, because the fire is downstairs, this fire here doesn't work, can't use it. This is a right pair. Looks like a nice day outside. Frosty. So at some point the clouds must have cleared in order to get the frost. Which is a bit pity because I really wanted to see the stars. But when we went to sleep, it was still cloudy, so we missed them. Okay, so let's see what happens today. Okay, we're going to have another go at doing Glendew Hill. Uh, same place, so we're probably going to get the same problems. I'm going to try and keep to the trees more than uh, the burn, to see how that goes. It's a very cold day. There's blue skies everywhere, except the top of the hill we want to climb. Can you believe it? Typical, eh? So we passed the bog. Uh, I led the lip way and took us around through the trees. Um, I've got a lot of practice of crossing bogs, so... Uh, now we're just hard bit done. Now the climb. We'll get there. We got past the bog, but it's still a, a steep climb. We we're up there to Dove Crags, and then from Dove Crags up to the top. And then views. This here is all dry bracken, which makes it easier to walk through than fresh bracken. It's still hard going. Uh, I'd hate to come here when it's high and green bracken and full of ticks and everything else. So, this is definitely a one for the winter. A little bit further to go yet. We'll get there. So, we're in the snow line now. Still heading up. It's hard going. Uh, we can see the crag now, it's over there. To get the other crag then, apparently, it's slightly easier to the rest of the top. But we'll find out when we get there. I'm not exactly convinced. Really nice though. Very nice. And, uh, we've finally got the Dove Crag. Uh, it just came out of nowhere to be honest. I thought it was going to take forever to get here, but uh, it just appeared. So that's the first milestone. <coughs> then from Duff Crag we'll go to the summit. But look at the views here. Eh? You're not getting it on the camera, but over there you can see Skiddo. Look at that. Can't beat that, can you? That's what it's all about. Now we're going to have a look around the uh, Dove Crag. Apparently there's an old Bronze Age Ken there. And uh, we'll see if there's anything interesting like there was at Christian Crag on uh, Mick, 12 Sagittarians video. So I'll do a couple of shout outs now. Um, <coughs> the first shout out is obviously to Mick, 12 Sagittarian. He's done a lot of walks in this area. I'll put some links to his channel and his walks. Um, the other one is to our old friend Andy Wardle, who uh, warned me that the car park which I was going to use was closed because I was going to do this from Kielder, but uh, the, uh, the place where I wanted to leave the car overnight was closed. So we've come in from this angle instead, from the Buffy's angle. Now the Buffy will be down there over behind those trees, you know, you can't really see it. There's a lively bunch of lads in there last night, good crack. Uh, one of them's got a YouTube channel of his own, 
uh, in Glasgow, I'm Oz, but I think his real name's Chris. Lives in Glasgow, but he's from Teesdale. So I'll uh, stick a link to his channel as well down below. But uh, that's the uh, shout outs for now. And obviously, I'm going to start doing some more shout outs because there's a lot of good channels I'll watch. Um, so when I go to places well, close to other people's videos, I'll do shout outs for them as well. So let's have a look at Dove Crag and then uh, we'll go up to the summit. And then we'll get to the summit, we'll check the time and then see what we're going to do after that. So see you in a bit. I can't see any Victorian vandalism or anything on this crag. Uh, in fairness, this one's a bit more deserted than Christian Crag and less prominent on the horizon. That's how cold it is. <laughs> Nice! <laughs> cool! It's the noise! It's freezing! <laughs> now I'm going to go up on the top. Apparently there's a, an old Bronze Age cairn at the top. So I'm interested in seeing that. Just uh, watching my step. A bit slippy here. You see? <laughs> the editing on this isn't going to be very good, I'm afraid. <laughs> so we'll see what happens when I put it all together. Uh, Summit or nothing, the lads there, Trev and Nate, there's another shout out. Uh, they've got a good video up on uh, tips on how to get people to watch your channel. Uh, personally, I do this for my own enjoyment. If people watch it, brilliant. But uh, I do it for me, really. Uh, I like it. Yeah, I like looking back at what I've done. And I like it, inspiring my daughter to come out with us to do stuff, you know. So, onwards and upwards. There's a can. Oh, it's going to be a bronze age one, but it's not. A little disappointed at that. Still, not disappointed with the views. <laughs> it's really nice. So, we have to go up. These crags here, and then right up to the summit. Let me do this. Gosh, well, we've had a bit of a disaster. Jason's drone's flown into a tree, and uh, Melina is busy climbing the tree now to try and get it against all our wishes. I mean, I know that Melina and Jason are rock climbers, but I'm not comfortable with them climbing the tree like that. I'm not comfortable with a climbing the tree. It's just to get back down yet. Oh, the hat's gone. Yeah, I think I can get the hat. Take a bottle of my water and you can throw that and get the hat. It's snowing. It's like a squirrel. Can't see her in the trees now. Don't take any chances. You're already taking a major one now. Of course. Just so everyone on YouTube knows how mad you are. She's got it. Jeez. You pulled it up. The back legs go, the back legs go first. This is nuts. Pull them downwards. Yeah. And in. I just hope she gets down all right. Yeah, I don't want to catch it. What am I doing? What am I doing? 
Will it fit in a pocket? Don't try this at all, folks. Definitely not. Definitely don't try it in one of the most isolated parts of England. Even if this was not an isolated part, I would I'm not comfortable I about this. Still a risk. Really right, not. Have to look at the branches. Right. Just to make sure. I can't really Okay. Just take it really easy. Take your time. There's no rush. Definitely do not panic. Points of contact, remember. Oh, I'm more than that. <laughs> it's uh, it's in one piece. Well, she risked her life for that. Because a bad fall from that would have been... Would have been bad, yes. Definitely a helicopter jump. I'm going to hack them. Right. Take a bottle of my water out of my back, pack them, throw it up. And she gets out from the tree. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> I don't know if to give you a round of applause so they condemn you for being absolute nuts. That's mental. Thank God for the gym. For four months. You were talking to Paul too much last night for doing a trick like that. Honestly. That was just mental. You're complete nuts. Okay. After the drama of the tree, we've climbed up the top of the rest of the crag and the summit is really close. So, alas, some good news. But, uh, we'll get there now. Everyone said that's really hard doing this. Just look at how deep this was. It's right up to my bloody groin. It's five deep. And that's not the first one I've fallen into. It's every five seconds. The summer top four, but getting to it's hell. I'm going to call the person on the other side, hell's bottom. Okay, let's keep going. Well, some places have false summits. I thought this can was the summit, but it's not. The summit is over there. Well, at least there's a bit of a path this time. Now originally... <laughs> now originally, my original plan, after I found out I couldn't go from Kielder, was to do Christian Crag first, and then walk across this moor to the... to over there. This is a hell of a distance and considering how little we've walked and how really difficult it's been uh, like knee high in the heather uh, I'm glad that Mick talked me out of it because uh, I don't think we would have ma managed it if I'd done the, the Christian crag walk I don't think we could have done it it would have been four miles of this instead of one mile. It's pure hell. 
Hey kids, we'll follow this path to the summit. But before we head off, just look at views. We got Lake District over there. You're not seeing it on our camera. You cross fell over there. Once again, I don't think the, the camera will pick it up. And then Christian Crags over here. Stunning. Here's a fence. Not sure the camera's going to pick it up. That fence is the border between Cumberland and Northumberland. So at the moment we're walking in Cumberland, but eventually we'll get to the top of here. Uh, the summit is where the two meet. But we've decided we're not going to do the crash site or Hell's Bottom or the most remote place because this terrain is just horrendous. So we'll back the summit, head back down, and then on another day we'll go from Kielder and we'll do the crash site, the most remote spot in England, and Hell's Bottom. And we'll do it from Kielder because then we can make use of the, the forest roads. But uh, this terrain is unbelievably difficult. I've been waist deep in the heather about two or three times now at least. So we'll plod on, get to the end, get the summit and then head back. Because we've still got, once we get back to the Boffy, there's still another four, five mile walk back to the car. I mean, we are seriously in the middle of nowhere here. This, we might not be going to the exact most isolated spot in England, but we are going to the most isolated hill in England and it's difficult to get here. Glendu Hill, everybody. England's most isolated hill. Let me show you the views. Now, over this ridge is a forest, and in that, well, actually over there, over that ridge there, there's a forest. In that forest is a Halifax bomber crash site, and also the most isolated spot in England. This is uh, six kilometers in any direction the way that the crow flies in order to get to a public road. The hedge up hill, the Cheviot, I'm not sure you're gonna get this on this camera, but over there you got Deadwater Fell, then you got Peel Fell next to it. I don't know what these ones are in Scotland. And over there you got Christian Crag. The most remote hill in England. Six kilometers any direction to the nearest public road, but when you're walking on foot, following paths and roads, it's probably a good, ah, I would say at least eight, if not 10 miles to the nearest occupied house. So we are in the middle of nowhere here. It's more or less roughly where the border the hills of it is where the border between Northumberland and Cumbria meet. You just drop down that hill on that side, it's where the border of Scotland, Cumbria and Northumberland meet together. And it's very, very cold. Right, time to get back to the Boffy, get the rest of our gear that we left there, clean up, and then head back to the car and hope we'll do the the Halifax bomb site in England's most remote spot, another day from a different direction. Uh, from this direction, it's just pure hell. Uh, it's possible, but we're gonna, we'll be racing against the light coming back. And I don't wanna be up here in dusk or dark, because it's a really dangerous place to walk. Right, see you on the next one. That was sheer hell. 
<laughs> and actually, funny enough. That was definitely the hardest work walk I've ever done, and it's the most unenjoyable one I've ever done. It's the first time I've been hiking and not enjoyed it. I mean, look at the state of my trousers, and I'm wearing gaiters, and I'm up to the knees, and these two people aren't wearing gaiters, <laughs> and they're absolutely drenched, and it's freezing cold. I've got <laughs> gloves, but they're about as much use as go. In fact, my hands are freezing. Uh, Melina hasn't got gloves, and her hands must be red raw. Right. But on the good point, we managed to get a hat out the tree. 